what's up what's up everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Judy and in today's video I'm going to walk you guys through the process that it took for us to build the fireplace around behind me that includes the base cabinets the shelves and the original um, the original idea was a brick surround that we got rid of and we had our good friend come in take some measurements Anthony came took some measurements and went back to his uh, workshop did the build and he came back and did the installation in one day and a good chunk of the night uh, and the phase two of the project was pretty much all on me I had to do the sanding the cooking the spaces fix the walls because most part of the walls were pretty much damaged from the brick removal my husband and I had to remove the brick there was a wire mesh there was concrete it was just a mess but we managed so I had to repair the walls I had to caulk the spaces sand uh, fill the nail holes and of course prime and paint and in this project I used Sherwin William polyurethane enamel in a certain finish I also use the PG gliding uh, uh, primer which was my first time using I normally use the Sherwin William primers but they were out because of the virus they were experiencing shortages in a lot of their most of their products but um, I did like the glide and the PG uh, formula that they had It's pretty thick but it did the job with that primer pretty much with any primer I haven't used a primer that I only had to apply just one coat because I normally apply one coat wait for it to dry and then I do another coat and all my coats are normally thin it's always advisable to apply more thin coats rather than applying one thick coat if that makes any sense all right guys so I hope you will enjoy the video if you have any questions please sound them in the comments and I will do my best to answer as many questions as I can Enjoy the video, have a great week, rest of the week, and have a wonderful weekend ahead. One of my favorite parts of this project was uh, having Anthony put a strip of light on the top shelf across the t on top of the TV and across to the other side of the bookshelf which was really amazing uh, because he was able to hide all the cables behind the wall and put an uh, electrical circuit behind the TV so we're able to, to connect the TV the light switch um right behind it and it's it's not visible which was amazing and this is where i had to come in and take over the second phase of the project um Anthony had to be able to install everything including the shelf holders, the doors, the drawer fronts so he can see how the units would fit. So I had to come back and remove the drawers, remove the doors, all that for me to start the face all over again. And this will be me here caulking and uh, filling out the spaces that needed to be repaired. There was this space between the wall and the base cabinet on both sides of the base cabinet. 
so what i did instead of just um putting on caulking and having a big old slob that drips in the middle what i had to do is i put a foam i went home depot got a foam uh, and i cut it in the middle and i stuffed it in there what what that does is it occupies most of the space instead of wasting so much corking and it much it looks much neater after that started sanding uh, all the surfaces I would say that part of woodwork and this DIYs and all that if you want to achieve good finish for any of the woodwork projects that you do is you have to be patient and sand properly do some research on what kind of sand, what grit of the paper, uh, sandpaper that you are supposed to use for what kind of wood, because that will affect how the finish looks like. So um, I took my time. I probably took a whole day sanding. And what I would say is, put on your mask if you can, so you don't have to inhale all that powder and sawdust.
this was getting pretty exciting for me because I knew we were getting closer to painting so before um, priming I normally use a brush an inexpensive brush paint brush pretty much and just dust off all the particles that would be hiding in those little you know um, spaces or you can use a tack tack cloth tack cloth is amazing for flatter surfaces but for in this case I had so many uh, angles and little spaces like um, the trim work angles like everywhere that I had the trim work there, there are little crevices in there that I needed to get in and clean up the dust so this is what I'm doing you use a, a brush and a brush does a pretty good job Like you can see I am using the roll and brush method basically what that means is I will roll on the paint on the surface and I will take a brush and I will brush over where I rolled what this does it helps me achieve uh, some really smooth um, finish which is pretty much eliminating the brush strokes and in this case I'm using um, a brush that's pretty meant pretty much meant for semi gloss finish but I'm using it with certain
I went to Lowe's Home Improvement Store and I picked up um, the cabinet hardware. I picked up the knobs for the cabinet doors and I picked up a three inch pulls for the drawer fronts. They are pretty basic, pretty regular, but the finish is the finish is exactly what I wanted. The ones that I really, really want for this space, I will get them from Rejuvenation. They are right now on back order, but these ones we just have to do. A great investment that I made during this project was these uh, templates that I bought from Lowe's Home Improvement as well. This was my first time drilling holes for pulls and knobs for the doors. And boy, these came really, really handy because all you have to do is know where to place them, fit them real nicely, mark with a pencil, and then drill the hole. What I will say when you're drilling the holes, be patient, be very gentle and just drill nice and slow. And once the hole is all complete, you reverse the drill and you reverse it nice and slowly. And after all that is done, you sand both the front and the back of the hole to just smoothen up the area.
that is it you guys i hope you enjoyed the video um i will keep you guys posted on the few changes that i'm also still planning on doing on this fireplace over here um the hearth is some kind of stone that's grouted with concrete which i like pretty durable but i am still contemplating whether i'm going to lay out some marble some kind of stone like the marble or porcelain to match the the posting that I put on the side of the, of the fireplace itself. So that's coming up. I'll keep you guys posted on what I do. The shelves, they're not completely, that's not the final styling.